technologies we had were completely uh, taken apart. Yeah. For example, my brother, um, Chris, was he was a little more nervous than the rest of us. He, he was, he lives in Philadelphia. He'd heard, you know, you're gonna end up in a small room with some guy with a whip and you know, <laughs> And he sort of believed it, so. He this was all the media does. Yep. I know. No. Well, yeah. And uh, I guess he watches more TV than the rest of us. <laughs> I see. So, there, there we are on our way to uh, Tehran. And we're outside Tehran, it's eight o'clock at night, and then gleaming spires out of the darkness and it's bright gold, uh, four minarets, this big, uh, beautiful mosque, and it's Ayatollah Khomeini's tomb. I see. And we said, well, of course we have to go visit. It wasn't on what we were planning to see, but this was obviously meant to be. We are supposed to see. And my brother, Chris, said, oh, God, we've made it this far, and now, you know, we're, the trip's almost over, and we're, we haven't been in trouble yet. And we just, no, I don't want to go, I don't and mom, of course, said, of course we're going. And all of us said, yeah, we have, we have to see this. So we go, we, we go to visit, and there are all the mujahideen getting out of buses from, from Afghanistan. Afghanistan. And, they're, and they're all oh. praying. And, so, and, and it's a powerful place, you know. It's, 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 it's uh, an amazing place. So we go inside, we take our shoes off <clears throat> in, in the outer room. So now we're, we're walking in with no shoes. We go through the guards, and my brother Chris, the nervous one, has the videotape. Anyway, he's not taking any, he's just carrying it around. So we go, we go in, and I'm, I'm talking to some people. I went over and, and saw the Ayatollah's tomb, and it's, it, you know, it's, it's a very beautiful space. It's like four football fields of green marble, and very relaxed kind of contemplative atmosphere. Some people pray, some people are sleeping around there. Some playing football, young kids. I mean, it's... it's yeah, it's, it's, it's a living space. It, it was. Sure. And so then we were ready to leave, and I, I left, Richard left. Mm -hmm. We all left except my brother Chris. And he had been looking at something, and he turned around, we were all gone. Yeah. And all he sees is this phalanx of three or four guards with, you know, the, with the guns. machine guns. Mm -hmm. And he starts to uh, kind of tiptoe past the guard, and, and the, the guard goes, um, They stop. Shema. Uh huh. Shema. Axe get empty. And Kuchi goes, No, no, no. I didn't ask. I, got a, I, I, I didn't take any uh, pictures. I didn't take. He goes, you know, Why not? It's beautiful. Why aren't you taking pictures? Everyone likes to come to take pictures and here. I take one of you. And, <laughs> and so my brother is so relieved, he almost starts to cry. He said, yeah, I'll take pictures of everything. And we have pictures of him with the guards, you know. So. But this, in a small way, is kind of a metaphor for our whole trip. Because at any point when sort of the the kind of propaganda and the boogeyman was closing in on us, mm -hmm. the reality would, would just make it go away, yeah. you know? It this was, is a very important thing to, to deal with, you know, on reality level, because we can't believe whatever anybody else will see without knowing. If somebody experienced something like yourself, that's quite different the story. But it gets back to the humor. It gets back to the deeper side of the soul. It gets back to all of those elements that are never projected in television or in films, that everybody experiences, all the Iranian community they experience at home. It's no different at home than it is in Iran. It's exactly the same. We're talking the same people. We're talking the same culture. Nothing changes that. You know, looking at you, you're quite young people. And 30 years ago, you spent 10 years in Iran.